the biblical truth of our hymns. Christ arose. Robert Lowry, American preacher who became a popular writer of gospel music hymns in the late 19th century. Christ arose, shall we gather at the river in nothing but the blood of Jesus. Great hymn. And then this was written in 1874. And it was called, Lo, he, in the grave he lay. And it was written while he was a pastor of the First Baptist Church in Pennsylvania. So, scripture, scripture. With that intact, you know that this would be included. Lo, in the grave he lay. The gospel is in three parts. How the Christ suffered and died according to scripture. One third. Was buried. Two thirds. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Three thirds. And we look at the second and the third. Lo, in the grave he lay, dead. Now there are people out there who, believe it or not, would say that Christ did not die. And he just fainted, had an episode, and they say when they laid his body on that cold stone in the, in the cave or in the, the, the hole that was that was made by Joseph and Arimathea, that once his body laid and hit that cold rock, it arose. That's not what the Bible says. He suffered and died and was buried. You bury a dead body. They craved the body of Jesus. Low in the grave he lay. There's all kinds of people in graves today. There are graves that are marked. There are graves that are Mark, but the, but the tombstones are worn away. There's a graveyard in Norwich, Connecticut that it's a field. All the markers were wooden and within time they rotted. There are maybe under your feet bones of people. Who knows? Lo in the grave he lay. Jesus, my Savior. Paul says, be careful, there's another Jesus out there. Christ arose about Jesus, who laid in the grave dead. Who is my Savior, capital S, waiting the coming day, three days and three nights. You know, he didn't come out of that grave, the resurrection, two and a half days. One and a half day, one day, 24 hours. He would disprove that, you know, probably maybe Good Friday was true, which Good Friday is not, because you can't get three days and three nights from Good Friday to Sunday. According to the scriptures, <clears throat> he suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. He's not here. He's risen, waiting the coming day. Jesus, he's my savior. He's my Lord. Be careful, there's another Jesus out there. There's plenty of them. We'll come to the refrain in a moment. Vainly they watched his bed. They hired troops. They hired watchmen. They hired soldiers to stand outside that grave. They they marked that grave with a seal. That's like you, you would have something... You, know, you pop off a seal, you turn it, and you break the, the wrapper to make sure no one's tampered with it. There was a seal put on that stone that, that if that stone had been removed, the seal would have been broken. And they'll tell you some products, if the seal's been broken, don't use it. Return it. So they watched. None of the disciples watched. The enemies of God, the enemies of Jesus Christ watched. Their fear was, we don't want the disciples to come and steal the body. And that was the last thing on their mind. Matter of fact, when the women came and proclaimed that he's not here, he's risen by the words of the angel, they didn't even believe. Think about that. Vainly they watched his bed was the enemy of Jesus Christ. Jesus, my Savior. Vainly they sealed the dead. We talked about that. That, that seal, that signet. 
Break the seal and something's happened. Jesus, my Lord. Death cannot keep his prey. He had victory over death. He had victory over hell. Lazarus was resurrected but went back to death. The, that widow's son of Nain died. Was resurrected. And again, he would die. All the resurrections in the Bible, they died again. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, he never died, he never died after that. He suffered and died according to scriptures. He was buried and arose again the third day according to scriptures and is seated at the right hand of the Father, never to die again. Jesus, my Savior. Oh, look at that. We got the word Jesus. We got the name. There's no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. And Robert has included Jesus six times so far what we read. He tore the bars away. Those bars are found in Jonah. Gates of hell. Gates of, hell, uh, of death. He took the keys of death and hell. Jesus, my Lord. Jesus, my Savior, did not stay in that grave. Jesus, my Lord, was waiting for that right time, according to the scriptures. Jesus, my Savior, they watched that cave, that stone. Jesus, my Lord, they sealed that stone. Jesus, my Savior, is no longer dead. Jesus, my Lord, got victory. And then we say, Lo, in the grave he lay, Jesus my Savior, waiting the coming day, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose. Hallelujah. You know, if you're in a religion, you're following a pastor, you're following a rabbi, you're following a pope, you're following another man. And he has died. Oh, he is dead. And then you go to the graveyard. He is still dead. <laughs> he will be always dead until God raises him up for either judgment. But Jesus Christ, my Savior, Jesus Christ, my Lord, up from the grave he arose. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to Scripture, was buried. And before he arose again, according to the Scriptures, the third day, he went down into hell. After his death, he deposited our sins into hell is somehow he preached to the people in hell he crossed over that gulf that uh, abraham says no man can cross he went over to abraham's bosom and released the captives and set them free he had an appointment that day with that repentant thief said today thou shalt be with me in paradise up from the grave he arose the women go back to the disciples and say, we have seen angels. We have proclaimed that he is alive. He's... We don't believe it. Peter and John run to the tomb and run inside the tomb. That's, that's not where Jesus was. The women said, the angel said, he's not here. He is risen. He's not to be dead again. Don't look for Jesus in the tombstone. Look for Jesus out in the open. With a mighty triumph over his foes. Satan, death, sin. God has got the victory through Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ is not God and God is not Jesus Christ, there is no victory over the foes. There is no victory over hell. There is no victory over death. He's just a mortal man. Think about it. If Jesus is not God, then he's just a mortal man. He should be still in the graveyard. And he's not. So that's your Jehovah Witness. You believe Jesus Christ rose from the dead? Yeah, then he has to be God. Why? Because mortal men stay in the grave. And if he's not God, that means he's a mortal man. Jesus Christ, 100% man, 100% God, is no longer in that burial field, no more in that tomb, no more in the grave, no more to die. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. The next great thing's going to happen. He's going to have four of the trump of God to come get his bride, dead or alive. Here he comes. He arose a victor from the dark domain. I would assume, I think I can safely assume, 
when they sealed that tomb, there were no airlocks and that there was no light that went into that empty tomb where Jesus lay. I assume. Maybe there was a spark of light. Who knows? But death. The Bible speaks about the pit, the hell, dark, no light, darkness, inside of a coffin where you seal it up. Today they put a, a concrete pad around it and seal that up and then they throw dirt on top of it and they put grass on top of it, dark. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. You want to come off from death? You want to get victory over death? You want to come out with light? You believe on me? And when you die, you'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord forever to be light. Where there's no need of a sun. There's no need of a moon or stars or candles. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, and God himself shall be the light of the place. Light, light, light. He lives forever. We all live forever. Christ lives forever. When these bodies have died, it's just the beginning of eternity. Think about it. When I die, that's it. I have begun eternity, and there is no time in eternity. A person I preach the gospel to, if they reject the gospel, they die, they begin their eternity in hell and they never, ever will end and never come out, but will go into the lake of fire that burns forever. A person that will receive the gospel, will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ with their heart and put their sin upon the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, they will die. And they'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord forever to begin their life of glorious life through Jesus Christ. With his saints to reign, that's the millennium. Those that have done what they should do, those that have tried the best they can do, those that have done what God has told them through the word of God, they will, re they will be rewarded of reign of kingdoms or cities or towns. I'm a saint. You don't have to be dead to be a saint. You have to be a child of God, and I'm a child of God. Many of them Catholic saints ain't nothing but hell death no victory no eternal life but the wrath of god abiding upon them he arose come on he arose look at the exclamation point what greater news you had oh he threw up football he threw up basketball oh it was just a great performance oh how great i am look how my job look how my car look at my family look at my checkbook who cares he arose go visit any graveyard anywhere in the world no one has arose but God, Jesus Christ, has arose. Hallelujah! Christ arose. Jesus, my Savior, he up from the grave. That's a resurrection. That's the third part of the gospel where to go to preach. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to Scripture, was buried and arose. Again, the third day, according to the scriptures. There's no tradition, there's no church that's above the scriptures of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus, my Lord, mighty triumphs over his foes. Satan will be cast off in the lake of fire that burneth forever. The enemy, the adversary, the accuser of the brethren, the murderer, the, the, the thief, the liar, the dragon will lose the battle when faced with Jesus Christ. Jesus, my Savior, rose victor over a dark domain. His victory in the dark domain of death and hell has given me victory to have eternal life. He that has the Son has everlasting life because Jesus 
is the victor. Jesus is the victory. I believe that's a hymn. Haven't heard that one in a while. He lives forever because he's my Lord. Jesus, my Lord, lives forever. I was born September 6, 1968. When was Jesus born? God, man, God, almighty God. When was, he was never born. I'm going to die at one point in time if the Lord tarries. When will Jesus Christ die as God? Never. But Jesus Christ, 100% man, 100% God, was born. We don't know the date or year. Probably the seventh month. Maybe the, the Feast of Tabernacles. 33 and a half years later, he suffered and died upon Calvary's cross. And he was buried in the, in the garden, in the tomb. Where Joseph, Joseph, uh, Joseph of Arabia buried him. He allowed him his tomb. And he arose from the grave victorious according to the scriptures. Forever living. As I said, I was born. My life has been given to me by God, by Jesus Christ. Jesus, my Lord, saints to reign. There is no millennial. Uh, there is no millennial reign without Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Jesus, my Savior, He arose. Jesus, my Lord, He arose. Hallelujah! Christ, the Anointed One, the One of God who is God, arose. Put this one down. And one of them questions I keep asking, I've got a few basic questions when we do this study. When was the last time your church sang, Christ arose? When was the last time? It's a wonderful doctrine song, it's a wonderful scriptural song, wonderful truth song, wonderful song that we are to tell the world that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to scriptures. And was buried and arose again the third day according to the scripture. Here's the death, burial, and resurrection. When's the last time your church sung it? What other kind of junk are you singing? This ought to be in the pages of a Bible-believing church that's washed in the blood that preaches the gospel.